John, you need to unmute. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, today is December 16th, 2022. And I'm John Roth, your host for the meetup for the Art Alliance Contemporary Class final episode of Virtual Sofa 2022. Uh, this program is being recorded and will be available on the AACG YouTube channel later today. Uh, during the course of the presentation, if, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we will uh, monitor that and get back to you with answers uh, at the end of the three presentations. Uh, AACG has the express consent of VG Management LLC for the use of the SOFA name for this temporary digital presentation. And this episode will conclude the virtual program and AACG will resume meetups uh, the first Friday in January, 2023. So everybody hopefully will have an enjoyable holiday season. <clears throat> for those uh, members and viewers, rather, who are not members of AACG and would like future programs, you're invited to join the Art Alliance using a link that'll be posted in the chat. <clears throat> so in honor of the 60th anniversary of the American Studio Glass Movement, the United Nations International Year of Glass, the Art Alliance is pleased to welcome the Duncan McClellan Gallery, the OK Spark Gallery, and the Momentum Gallery. And our first presenter will be the Duncan McClellan Gallery, and our host for that is Mary Childs. Mary, the show is yours. Thank you, John. And uh, uh, thank you to the Art Alliance of Contemporary Glass for the uh, chance to share our gallery and our artists with you. Um, we are going to start by introducing Duncan McClellan, who is here with us. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's uh, great to see everybody here, and I really thank you for the opportunity to tell uh, you about our gallery, um, what we have been doing in our present exhibitions, and what our great lineup is for the uh, 23. Our complex is over 19,000 square feet of gallery, uh, representing over 125 both American and internationally known artists. Uh, our, we have sculpture gardens, professional hot glass facility, and we house DMG School Project, which is our 501c3 for glass education. We have mobile units that go into schools, uh, mostly inner city schools, uh, and we do classes for both adults and uh, uh, children, and we do professional and emerging artist residencies. We started with an old tomato packing uh, warehouse, and we were able to form a, the Warehouse Arts District with a few other artists in the neighborhood. We now have over 250 artists that live, work, and show all in this mile square area. And uh, at this point, I would like Mary, to our artistic director, to tell you more about our present exhibitions and our lineup for 23. Take it away, Mary. Well, thanks, Duncan. Again, thank you to everyone for the chance to uh, share the gallery with you. I'm happy to uh, be with the Duncan McClellan Gallery uh, for this uh, ex exhibition and for this presentation. Uh, we currently have two exhibitions, Forces of Nature with Kelly O'Dell, Krista Matson, Jamie Randall, and Tommy Rush. Raven Sky River, and Demetra Theophanis and Dean Benson. This is the view of the gallery as you walk through the front door. There's a little video. Uh, we're focusing right now on Jamie Randall and Mark Clarson. In the background, you see Krista Matson, Tommy Rush, Raven Sky River. Here's Jamie Randall and Mark Clarson again. And a beautiful installation with Demetra and Dean. 
These are examples of some of the works in this exhibition. We also are focusing on Jeremy Popelka and Stephanie Trenchard in with the new. We have these beautiful uh, multi-layered cast works by Stephanie. And Jeremy has created a new body of work as well. And this body of work with the complex Murini that he's working with re refers to colors in the universe. And then in these pieces in the front with the red, also referring to textiles from Eastern Europe, which um, has to do with his genetic background. We have more gallery space. This is an inner gallery and in the front you see Tim Rawlinson, you see Dante Marioni on the side, uh, Steve Hagen, Shelley Allen on the left, Ayaoki, Sid Hutter. Robin Grevy, Rick Allen, Shelley Allen. And here, is Martin Rosal. Tim Rollinson. Matthew Curtis from Australia. We have other areas in the gallery. This is one area and you see Mark Mateo Salvadori, Paul Nelson, Lepi Gassman, Kelly O'Dell. Lucy Lyon, Rich Royal. We also have a focus gallery, which is a special area for exhibitions. In this gallery, cur currently we have Stephen Rolf Powell, Jason Christian, Gabe Feenan, Kazuki Takazawa. And Eric Hilton and James Allen. Part of our complex is a sculpture garden. And this was a gravel area, it was loading dock. Duncan uh, planted over 70 tropical fruit trees. There are 50 um, varieties of orchids. We see Jane Jaskovich, Mark Chatterley, Susan Rankin. At night, it's all lit up. It's a beautiful area. Coming up. We have some wonderful exhibitions coming up. The first exhibition will be the Washington Glass School, uh, Dreams and Visions, artwork for a distracted world. And we're so honored and excited to have the Washington Glass School back with us. Uh, Tim Tate will show a variety of smaller works, as well as these beautiful pieces that are waiting to be hung up. Can't wait. We're so excited, Tim. It'll be beautiful. The gallery, um, is, the gallery looks spectacular. You've done so much with it. Really, we're very excited to be there as well. Thank you, Tim. So uh, members of the Glass School will be down at various times during the exhibitions, doing talks and workshops. Oops. Erwin Timmers. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm getting an echo all of a sudden. Um, let me turn my phone off, maybe. Sorry about that. Okay. Erwin Timmers will be uh, giving an, uh, a casting class, and that will be on the 21st. And these are examples of the castings that he will uh, teach people how to do. But these pieces will also be in the exhibition.
this was a show we had done earlier with Duncan um, to have the wash the whole Washington Glass School down, and they we are repeating it. And I'm so happy. Duncan's an old old friend, and it's really nice to have our school go down and be represented at it. So, thank you, Mary and Duncan, for that opportunity. Thank you, Tim. We're thrilled to have you. You just didn't have to mention old twice, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. And there's a lot of new work here that um, has really evolved and changed over the time. So we're excited to have that. Now, concurrently with the Washington Glass School in another area of the gallery will be new works from Glass Keeb. Uh, the title of the show is From the Kitigat, which is the fjord just outside the studios of Backhaus and Brown and Egervark Studios. These works are made of blown and carved glass. Many of the pieces have uh, glass runes carved into them that tell the story of the uh, gods that the pieces are made of. And then the Danish oak is so beautifully crafted and the pieces are fit together, much as the original Viking ships would have been. Now in March, we also have Deanna Clayton. Uh, Deanna's created a new body of work and the title of her show is Surging Forward. Deanna uh, works with Pat DeVere and um, metal mesh, often copper. And these figures are some of the newest work that she's created. She also will be doing a master class during that time frame here in our studio. Thank you, that's true. She'll be doing two different days, actually. Each class will be um, just several um, hours and um, there'll be a little wine involved. It'll be a lot of fun. Now, for the first time um, in uh, several years, we have a guest curator, Fabienne Carboneau from uh, just north of Montreal, and she'll be curating the Canadian Glass Show 2023 Masters from the North. This is a piece by Stefan Pond, which will be in the exhibition. It is a cast piece and Stefan creates this work by individually molding each figure out of wax, repositioning them again and again until he has just the right uh, configuration and then recasting them into a larger piece. This is a little video of a piece that's coming by Stefan and it's five feet long. It's not finished yet. This is a work in progress. But it will be pretty impressive. Other artists, Susan Rankin, Paul Rodrigue, Patrick Cremo, Carolyn Lillette, Giles Payette, Marisha Trond, Ryan Bavin, Naoko Takanuchi, Catherine Benoit Fleur, Karina Gouven and Cedric Gillette, Jill Allen, and Julia Raymer. Now, a big part of what we do is um, our dedication to education about glass art. And this involves our 501c3 nonprofit educational charity, the DMG School Project, working in conjunction with the St. Pete High Glass Workshop. And this is an image of the St. Pete High Glass Workshop. And we're having a demonstration with visiting artist Hiroshi Yamano. And this is something that is ongoing. The two entities work together to uh, bring education about glass to the public. Julia Rogers, Julia and Robin Rogers uh, are two of the many artists that have been with us. 
Peter Hauk from the MIT Glass Lab. Um, the MIT Glass Lab has been um, at the DMG School Project and the gallery several times. We also bring our mobile hot shop out to schools to educate uh, the public and, and children about what glass is all about, the science, the history, um, teamwork, all of that. That's a big, that's a big thing that uh, the DMG School Project does. And our lecture series is very popular. Uh, here's Richard Jolly, Deanna Clayton, just two of the artists who have um, presented these wonderful lectures in our courtyard. We also uh, do residencies and uh, Raven Sky River did, uh, has had two residencies with us. His first residency um, enabled him to produce the first sea turtle that he ever made. Uh, Duncan uh, provided him with all the glass, all the time to uh, perfect the design, experiment with it. And uh, that really brought that series to the forefront and enabled him to continue with that. Now, finally, you know, our real mission is to share the love of glass and bring the love of glass to the public. And here is a picture of a school class. It's something that uh, the DMG School Project does quite a bit, is bring in schools and they have an etching class. They get to design their own patterns. They're provided with uh, glasses or plates and they get to see the etching process. And, you know, it's just a, a way of um, enlightening uh, people about what can be done with glass, that it can be fun, that it can be interesting. And, um, you know, it just rounds out the whole mission of educating and sharing the love of glass uh, with everyone. So with that, we want to say thank you very much. We hope that you will come to St. Petersburg, see the gallery, check us out online, come to all these wonderful exhibitions that will be happening in the classes. And uh, thank, thank you very much and happy holidays to everyone. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Duncan, for a delightful presentation. Well, thank Our you. next presenter will be uh, Matt Fine from OK Spark Gallery in uh, beautiful Norfolk, Virginia. And so Matt, uh, go ahead and let us hear your presentation. All right. So I'm unmuted, correct? You're fine. Great. All righty, everyone. Well, um, appreciate the opportunity as well. Uh, it's great to be with you guys and hope everyone's getting ready for the holidays. Okay, Spark um, first did SOFA uh, in 2013. And uh, for years uh, before that, I had done SOFA several times. And the thing that I kind of felt like I lacked by doing that was um, the fact that, that I could only show a couple of pieces depending on the mood of the gallerist. So from that, uh, OK Spark was born, and it was uh, we are a, a um, artist-driven gallery. Uh, the idea being that we wanted to be able to show larger bodies of work. Um, by artist-driven, I mean all the artists must attend the show and be there to speak with the public and talk about their work. And we've always viewed that as part of, our, of the educational piece of what we do. Um, we've had as, as many as eight or 10 artists, almost usually all 3D, but we do do um, a little bit of, of wall work as well. This is kind of the core crew that we have right now. Um, so there, Stephen Cox on the left, Kirsten Stingle, myself, and Michael Zabo. Um, here is Kirsten. She is a-, a, a the, Your screen. Sure. There we go. You're not seeing it? I'm sorry, are you not seeing No, you need to share your screen and. Well, I thought y'all had. Okay, give me a second then. I apologize. I thought I was. Mm, there we go. Hmm. 
Well, I'm pushing share my screen. I'm sorry. Matt, after you find the right window, you still need to do it one more time. And this should be from the PowerPoint, right? From the Zoom, Matt. Oh. Zoom. I'm sorry, guys. Bottom of your screen, it's a green button. It says share screen. Push that button. There we go. Okay. I had it. No problem. Now are y'all looking at my screen? It's just not showing my. Yes. Okay. Okay. How about that? Good. Yes. I apologize. Um, so here we are Except at SOFA. There, there's the team. Um, I was just describing us. Uh, this is Kirsten Stingle's work. Uh, Kirsten is a ceramic artist, um, and her work is very narrative in nature. Um, she is a storyteller, lots of stories about and, and, and information about women and, and challenges that women face in this world um, are presented in her work. Uh, these are some of the Stephen Cox pieces. Um, Stephen is... Uh, uh, a, a wonderful artist out of out of uh, Wisconsin, and he does lots of blowing. All these pieces are fabricated after being blown, done cold. Oftentimes, uh, as many as 70 or 80 pieces can be involved in one of his constructions, and his work has also become more narrative as he's moved through his career um, uh, and some fascinating beasts and uh, interesting storytelling there. And this is Michael Zabo's work. Uh, Michael is a, a, a stainless and metals guy. Um, he often does fountains, but he's kind of pushing away from those and focusing more on public work and, and, and uh, more home installations. And this is some of my work. I am a, a, a hot glass caster, and uh, I oftentimes, after the glass is cooled, mix it with uh, black granite and then carve the granite and the glass together. Um, a couple more of my pieces here. I, I often have sand ca uh, texture on the pieces, sand captured in the piece. You can see here I'm cutting and, and, and grinding the work at the same time. Uh, so I've been cutting and grinding the glass and, and the granite at the same time. A couple of more pieces, the, the, the kind of amber piece, you know, I'm very impolite to my glass. So I cut it with a diamond saw, come back in with a hammer and chisel, fracture it back off. It's a very kind of a risky process that I've got. I had to, there weren't a lot of people to ask how you how you attack a piece of cast glass with a hammer and chisel. So I had to kind of invent my processes as I was going through, just how I held the hammer and chisel, how hard I hit, uh, things of that nature. Um, these are a, a couple other new pieces that'll be shown coming up. And these are a couple of Michael Zabo's um, stainless exterior pieces. He's, I said, uh, focusing a lot on public work and um, you know his his work is much is is very lyrical, um, lots of beautiful shapes, pushing and pulling. Um, he is an impeccable craftsman, and he also has um, incredible skills with uh, computer assisted design. So he's able to uh, put these pieces together. And the reason I show these uh, here's one of my early public pieces. My work much more geometric in in nature for my public work. Um, I feel like geometry personally um, relays really well. Kind of feel like the pendulum in public work needs to swing one way or the other. Um, and so it was all leading towards this, which is a public piece that Michael and I did our first collaboration. Uh, here it is at a town bank site in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you can see my blue gla cast glass and the, the kind of lyrical swoopy stainless shapes. And it began... Uh, early on with a drawing like this. It progressed to one of his computer assisted design drawings here. Whoa, how'd that get in there? Everybody likes seeing a 68 pound striped bass, right? State state record? Okay, moving on. Um, so this is uh, the piece in process. Um, and the blue tape is symbolizing the glass and how it will fit. It was kind of fascinating. The glass and the and the uh, stainless did not meet, 
Uh, their first time was meeting was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Michael works in San Francisco. So here we are in the installation of the piece. And it was, uh, it was exciting, I can tell you that. Um, and here it is in its final installation, um, black river rocks underneath it, beautifully lit from underneath. And um, so definitely something that, uh, that we wanna do some more of. Here, here's a, a detail of the glass and the, and the aluminum uh, stainless and how they meet. Um, I hope you'll pay attention to the glass and how it's cast. There are two different colors of blue mixing with clear and not seeing a lot of it, but there's a, I also use some black frit in the casting. These are kiln cast pieces, about five inches, six inches thick. Um, and the reason I want you to notice that is because um, I have now started doing some of my own after the collaboration with Michael and he's helping me um, to design the pieces. So here's just a quick sketch of a piece that is symbolic of a woman to me, that then you can see the blues areas where the, the glass will go. And just the other day, I went to the welding shop and uh, here in Norfolk where uh, the guy has, was able to um, get the, the, the pieces are now put together for the first time. And if you look to the kind of by my knee, you'll see in the inside of that one, there's a hole cut out, uh, a black uh, a, a rectangular uh, hole these will be internally lit. So, um, and with the LEDs and the technology now, it's really able to control how much volume of light you put through. You can also change the color of the light that's coming through. So all four pieces of glass in the three different um, rectangles will, will be lit up internally. So, um, you know, I, I, I show those pieces because uh, we are interested, Michael and I are, uh, very interested in doing more commission work that could both work at a home as well as a, at, a, at a business or in public. Um, OK Spark has a, a show schedule coming up, so we'll be in Art Palm Beach in January, and I am working very hard to have my uh, stainless and glass uh, piece will be ready for that. And then we are going to be in Los Angeles in February, back to Palm Beach for Modern and Contemporary, which is a great show and uh, Art San Francisco in Seattle also uh, this summer. I'll also say that at, uh, Palm Beach Modern and Contemporary had the opportunity at our booth was next to uh, a, 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 a gallery that was showing Dan Daly and got to begin a nice friendship with Dan. You know, Dan's kind of, for me, uh, there, were, there were a couple of the glass artists in the world where they were kind of my rock stars. And when I met them, I'd be all nervous. And, and you know, so the first time I met Dante or Dale, and, and maybe the same can be said for Dan, who's someone whose work I followed as a young artist and have always been super impressed by. And I'm glad to say that Dan and his son, Owen, who has a separate body of work, will be joining us at Art Palm Beach. And I think hopefully more from there. So I believe Dan is out there. Now I have to figure out how to unshare my screen, right? There you go. So again, thank you for the opportunity to present. We're really looking forward to uh, getting back out and doing some shows. It was a long hiatus through, uh, through COVID and it's been great to get back out. The, the, the two shows that we've done, San Francisco and uh, Seattle were both voracious uh, art buyers and people excited to get back out and buy work. So looking to hopefully continue that. Um, and with that, Dan, if you're out there, I think. Well, I'm here. I don't know if uh, anybody can hear me yet. We hear you. Okay. So I have to reverse my screen. Um, And uh, at the very bottom of the Zoom, I've just learned there it is. Um, let's see. So, is the microphone on or off? On. We hear you. Okay. Um, Let's see, how do I get my, I don't see a symbol to touch. Uh, 
uh, sorry, I did this yesterday with Linda and thought I got there, but I'm not seeing the same thing I saw. Do you have your PowerPoint open on your desktop? I do, yeah. Get the youngest person you know to help you. Yeah, Money, how many times you practice? This is uh, it, it's always different live. Are you seeing anything? Yes, stair uh, stair rail. Yeah, with the birds. Okay. Now, are you seeing this image? Yes. Okay. Sorry for uh, that awkward beginning. And even though I've practiced it. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much, Matt, for a terrific introduction. That was very nice. And um, thank you all for um, having me as a guest today. It's much appreciated. I'll just give you a, a little overview of um, some things underway in the studio and what I'm going to show in Palm Beach. And um, this is uh, our old place. It's a 200 year old. Uh, dairy farm in New Hampshire. This is what it looks like from the back view and the house stops where that row of windows stops and then it's uh, an office um, there and then this main studio building on four levels and then there's a large barn to the right which has uh, it's a storage barn it has a lot of work in it, it also has um, garages below for a couple vehicles and some uh, glass storage and Linda has her studio in where they milk the cows. And um, this is Linda McNeil, my wife of 45 years, I think. And uh, my constant partner, collaborator, we, we've made many things together. I sometimes help her making glass parts for her pieces or she makes metal parts for my pieces. And even today we occasionally do that. But she's a jeweler now. She stopped making big work uh, because of carpal tunnel. And uh, she started concentrating totally on jewelry. And she's a trained professional jeweler. So her work uh, uses all the same materials that mine does. But she has her own uh, approach at a different scale. We do make some use of the fact that it's a farm. It's a crop of garlic from a couple of years ago. This is a piece that I'll be showing in Palm Beach. It's called I. <clears throat> pardon me, eye to eye. <clears throat> and it's um, from a series I call white forms. They're more or less vessel forms, but they're closed. They have no openings. I use the vase form, the vessel form, as a format for expression, for usually for applying a kind of drawing to it. And um, in this case, it's um, from a series of pieces that I call face vases. There is a face on the other side of this vase called Fox Man. You can see that they're enameled. So after it's been sandblasted to create the drawing and acid polished to create the surface, then these thousands of dots of color are applied, it's vitreous enamel. And then it's refired to make that uh, glass dot, all those dots stick to the piece. I like the opacity of the of the color that's applied on top of the translucent glass. So this way it works to heighten the graphic uh, power of the drawing. And also it takes advantage of light falling on the piece as well as light coming through the piece. But beyond technique, my main goal is really to convey uh, the feeling with the piece and the drawing itself, the, the thought that I have in mind I want to convey. And I think that's true with all of my work. My, I'm, I, I make things that are subjective and narrative, and every piece is intended to convey a thought or a feeling. Um, like I've done with the vase, to use it as a format for expression, I'm using the lamp also. This is from a series of figurative lamps. Uh, it's a piece called Stretch, an impossible stretch. It's very geometrically stylized. And um, it is a lamp. It functions as a lamp. It could light up a space. 
but it's not intended really that way. It's intended to call more attention to itself uh, by the fact that it lights up. The um, exotic plant is gold-plated brass and ruby glass. The base is vitrolite glass. I have a big collection of vitrolite that was used. Uh, it was, they stopped making it in the late 40s, but it was used for many years on a lot of Art Deco buildings. So it has that kind of palette of color um, from the, that era of design. And <clears throat> that always appealed to me. Uh, but in general, I've used vitrolite for many things, murals and uh, um, sculpture of all kinds. This is a piece called Yorkville, which is a view of a, a um, section of Manhattan across the East River from Astoria Park, Queens, with um, the Tribo Bridge visible on the upper right. And the lightning strikes were there that night um, watching uh, you know, my parked car looking at the skyline in Manhattan with a little bit of sunset left. Um, it's made out of lots of glass canes. So I pull a lot of cane, cut them up into pieces, um, fit them together as sections of a mural and build these images with this palette that I've created out of the rods. It's given me um, a way to compose things that I had never done before and it's quite different from any kind of drawing that I do, pastel or, or watercolor. Um, so I like it. All these pieces in this series have been about a sense of place. So I wanted to make landscapes, but I ended up making a lot of cityscapes also, and, and also factoryscapes, uh, kind of industrial scenes. This is our son Owen's um, wall piece called Sun in Waves. It's really a reaction to um, being on the water and seeing um, the reflection of the sun in many places at once on the, on the ocean surface. It's a cast glass piece made of many parts that have been assembled. Um, and another, uh, this is a painting. Now you can also see his interest in pattern here, the, the overlaid colors on color on color on color, creating a sense of depth in the image itself called fire rain. Owen's been my assistant for about 15 years in the studio, and he has his own studio in Connecticut. This is where he mainly produces his work, and all of our castings are done in Connecticut now. He has many kilns there. Um, this is a large drawing of a circus vase that I'm making. I've been making this piece for, I don't know, maybe I, 10 years ago I started it, and it's been in progress and then put aside and been put aside and put aside. But finally, I'm finishing it. It's about six feet high. These are the glass sections that are put together with uh, metal rings and tape in this picture, but they'll be held in, a, uh, in bronze rings. And here you can see I'm fitting the glass cast, uh, cast glass torso into one of the figures. There you can see the two bronze figures that go onto the rings that will hold the vase together. Um, the piece is called Amour, French word for love. And the figures are uh, embellished with numerous um, flames on their legs and arms. And um, you can see them sticking out there on, the, on the both legs in this photo. I don't think, yeah, they are on one arm of their eyes. There's a close up drawing of the, the male figure, which is interpreted as a tiger. And then here are cast glass in bronze bezels that are being uh, fit and they're almost fully fit. You can see there's the, the tiger head and then um, on the right there, there's the, the eyeball, the glass eyeball is set in already, there are teeth ready to be set and the tongue is made. Um, here are the torsos, glass cast torsos and the um, models that created those uh, molds to make the castings for the heads and the torsos. And here I'm uh, checking the fit of these parts in the, in the cold shop. And here the uh, bezel is being put on as a test to, for the fit of the torso. So I'm just screwing this little uh, screw in to hold that uh, metal together, squeezing it shut. So there's a lot of uh, fussy work that goes into these things. Most of my work is pretty obsessive anyway. 
We're making this stair railing for a the house in works, Maine. You know, this starts the balcony right up here. And you can see. So, all together, there are 23. These are the sections. Um, these are the stalks of beach, uh, of beach plants. The, they're cast in bronze. Here we're assembling the, um, this one section, which is the prototype. So in the metal shop, we're, uh, we're building the pieces. We're, we're assembling the pieces that we've already made. So you can see now this, the stocks are being installed. They screw into place. None of the screws will show because they're either under the, in the, set into the floor or they're uh, up inside the handrail that goes on this system. So you can see here we are uh, gently handling everything because I don't want to scratch up the patina on the bronze or, or uh, anything, you know, handling it roughly. And here we're um, inserting the stainless steel. Now the stainless steel rods will go horizontally a little bit like a cable railing, except that these are very rigid. And um, now you can see in this speeded up part of the video, that they go in and they create a kind of background to the drawing that is the uh, this section. So this is one section out of 23 and um, it's now going together and you can see it's a very rigid object. And the part of the point of this, um, this linear aspect is to create this image of waves and gentle air. There's the handrail. Uh, the handrail is made of walnut with embedded but now the glass has to get skinnier and here's uh, so done just a bird that goes in this, in this other than railing and um and, and i'm fitting it into it. a brass a bronze casting that's um, a bezel that holds it in place and you can see the bezel's been attached now it's not patinaed yet and i'm just screwing it on um with these very small screws doesn't look bad <laughs> it's good and then um, this piece of bronze will be very vulnerable. To this has to be shoes, presented. Et cetera. Uh, this this prototype has to be presented. It, it gets the handrail attached to it that you saw, and it gets covers on those stainless steel posts. And um, then finally, I'm showing you this uh, pair of sconces, which I'll show in Palm Beach. I've made a lot of sconces. I like the lighting in general. I don't know how many lights I've made, but I've made a lot of them now. And in these, these lights are, they're purposeful. They will light up a space, but I see them as a sculptural celebration of say an entrance or maybe to go on both sides of a mantle or to um, just be uh, an illumination point on the wall that is sculptural. They are like my figurative lamps, um, expressive of some aspect to character I'm trying to convey. And the jewels that they hold in their hands in this case, uh, uh, for example, or the colors of the, the eyes and the, the other glass in the piece, all to me convey a kind of a character and mood. So um, that's a quick overview of the, the pieces that I'll be showing and two of the pieces that Owen will be showing in Palm Beach. And again, I'd just like to thank Matt for this opportunity to work together and I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I hope, uh, Maybe if any of you have seen this and then see me in Palm Beach, just say hi. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, appreciate your presentation. Moving on to our next presentation, we'll have Momentum Gallery with uh, Jordan and Shifra Allers out of Asheville, North Carolina. Jordan, please take over. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody who's joined the call today. We're really excited to share a little bit about uh, our program and some of our artists with you. Uh, I am Jordan Allers. I'm here with my wife, Shifra Allers. We own and operate Momentum Gallery in downtown Asheville. Um, Momentum Gallery is a state-of-the-art 15,000 square foot space with a focus on contemporary material-based work, including glass, <laughs> some of the most innovative artists working in the medium today. 
the gallery represents art as many of you will be, will be familiar with, along with emerging talents. The gallery's collection is highly curated and diverse with many works celebrating a sense of wonder and discovery. Recurring themes of nature, transformation, and narrative stimulate visitors daily and collectors and institutions appreciate the quality, uniqueness, and significance of the works we offer. We're really proud of the artists we're working with and grateful to have a couple of them with us this afternoon. John Littleton and Kate Vogel are a husband and wife glass artists based in North Carolina. I've had the privilege of knowing and working with John and Kate for almost 25 years. Their incredible sculptures integrate blown and cast glass elements with fabricated steel and LEDs. John and Kate have worked collaboratively for nearly 40 years and the collection of Momentum features incredible works from several series, including their remarkably detailed cast glass hands holding a variety of objects, graceful Ikebana inspired sculptures and mesmerizing kinetic gimbal rings that quietly spin faceted gems and orbs made from glass. Littleton and Vogel const, uh, consistently explore new ideas that push technical boundaries and open our eyes to a world of beauty and wonder. We're thrilled to have John and Kate with us today and uh, to tell us a little bit more about what they're working on currently and answer any questions you may have. John and Kate, thank you for making the time. Are you all there? Thank you, thank you Jordan and Shifra. Yeah, and as we were starting to prepare for this and we're thinking about the whole idea of virtual sofa, I was talking with John and I said, you know, I can't say that I miss going and setting up a show and having to take it down like in a you know less than a week's period of time, but I so miss all of the wonderful people we've seen over the years at Sofa Chicago and both being able to visit with artists both near and far, collectors, other gallery people. So I'm just grateful we get a moment to sort of like see what everybody's doing again because I feel like that piece kind of fell off the map all of a sudden for us after decades of that being a part of our fall life that we plan for. So, and the other piece is, is that if any of you have not been to Momentum Gallery, oh my gosh, you, if you're traveling through, through the Southeast, you should, definitely should go. What Jordan and Schiffer have done with their gallery it is one of the most beautiful galleries, I think, in the Southeast. It's really, it's breathtaking is all I can say. So, um, I, I hope that you all get a chance to see it. And so do you want to talk a little bit about what we've been up to lately, John? <laughs> well, we've been collaborating since we started uh, working together in 1979. And every piece is um, a blending of our ideas of uh, working together. And we work out, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Sometimes it takes a little longer to yeah. coordinate. Yeah. And, uh, the pieces that Jordan and Shifra put up are a lot what we're working on right now. We've got a series of gimbals and a few glass, cast glass flowers that just came out of the oven. Yeah. Um, I'm also cutting some more gems for gimbal pieces and for some hands. We find that we oftentimes have more than one series going on at a time in the what we're working on in one series might influence another. So the gimbal pieces and those cut pieces that John's been um, doing that we hot work together, I guess some of them a while ago and some of them just like a month ago, are very much also influenced by the objects that are being held in the hands. And I find that, you know, we're working on something that's being held in the hands and it might make us think about one of the flower pieces and it kind of goes back and forth. But I really think that Jordan really hit on it when he made the comment about beauty and wonder. And I think those are two themes that have played throughout our work. I love it when someone walks up to a piece is awed or surprised by it, but also when they're just touched by that, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And um, I think the gimbal pieces have really been fun for us because they're kind of that surprise. You don't expect the motion or movement in them. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to say, I think the other thing is, is John and I are continuing to think about other public art pieces or large outdoor sculptures. We don't have any in the works right now, but it's something that continues to be exciting and interesting to us as well. Yep. 
All right. Thank, thank you guys. Um, you know, we love your work and um, we also really like you personally. Um, <laughs> Longtime friends of the family and honored to represent your work here at Momentum Gallery. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 great to be at a virtual sofa event. Um, and my name is Shifra, I'm Jordan's wife, um, co-owner of Momentum Gallery. And um, we often find that we are very selective about the artists that we represent because we like to show work that is emotive and makes us feel things. Um, is cohesive as a body or a collection, but also um, we're very intentional about the artists that we work with because we feel like we are um, advocating for them and the work that they're doing and um, helping promote it. Um, another artist that we're quite proud to represent would be Tim Tate, um, who's here on the call with us. Um, Tim, yeah, uh, Tim plays with the idea of perception. His endless mirrors are visually captivating. They appear as five foot tunnels on the wall. We often have people asking if they can see what's behind the wall so they can understand the work that they're seeing. Um, Tim works individually as well as collaboratively with other highly accomplished artists, um, both within the Washington Glass School as well as beyond. Um, he's done collaborations with other artists here in the gallery. Um, one of our ceramic artists, Lisa Clegg. Um, and uh, he often works to create site-specific pieces with strong personal con connections. We are honored to have facilitated some of those works, um, in particular for a couple who um, recently was building a new house and um, come from two different cultures and wanted a piece that would blend both their history as well as their future together. Um, through conversations, um, Tim identifies themes and imagery that resonates with our clients and then produces um, pieces that are individualized and unique. Tim, I'm wondering if you want to talk a little bit about some of the work that you have here at Momentum and some of the commissions that we do. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. And first, I want to thank the AACG for realizing that this is a social group and that we get a chance to have this virtual sofa. I, like Kate and John, really miss seeing everyone in person. So while this is, you know, it's, it's not perfect, at least we get to see everybody's faces on these Zooms. And I too do not miss the setup or take that. However, <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. Um, I would also say before I get into these two pieces, which are wonderful collaborations, but um, that if you have not been to Momentum Gallery, it's an astounding gallery. It's a material specific sculptural and painting gallery. It's that crossover that we always hoped would occur in all these years. And here it is, this crossover has occurred. If this gallery were in Manhattan, I'd be rich right now. So I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping they open a branch and put it up there. Because uh, if you're in Asheville, everyone here owes it to themselves to just walk through, they say 1,500 square foot. I think it's 5,000 square foot. It might be, I think it's 15,000 square foot. It's, it's 15,000. Oh, okay. I thought you said 1,500. I thought, where are Maybe they talking I'm, about? Maybe I made a mistake. Sorry. It, it's a huge gallery. Um, anyway, uh, it's a joy to go to. Um, on these two pieces they're showing, uh, many of you know I love doing collaborations. You know, I'm working on this huge collaboration with Joyce Scott right now. But this, um, these are other artists that are also very close to my heart. So this is Kathleen Elliott. Kathleen Elliott usually works in a slightly larger form, but we sat down and had long discussions about what would it feel like to have memories of going through a forest. And so she had never done these kind of flat 2D, or they're actually 3D, um, hand worked trees so we had a great great fun in making all these different ones some have nests in them some have fruit in them some have birds in them uh some have flowers in them so as you go through this it's supposed to just be these glass trees that represent the forest especially in autumn time but um with the tunnel in the middle many of you realize that when i have these long tunnels i see them as timelines in people's lives 
So we kind of look back and remember and, you know, think upon the lives we've had. And in this case, uh, the good parts about it. So that gives you that. The one with Lisa Clegg, many of you may or may not be familiar with Lisa Clegg. Um, Lisa is a ceramic artist that is huge in the South East and not gets out much past that, mainly because she sells everything she has down there. And she's been one of my favorite uh, artists for years. And so we did this one entitled, Even the Red Queen Has Things to Hide, because in this world, everybody's kind of hiding just a little bit of themselves and unnecessarily. So you see her cuddling with her, her buddy lover behind that hedge. And uh, that's our fun with that, with that red frame, which really pops off the wall. I, I have uh, quite a bit of work at Momentum and I, that's all I'm gonna say about these pieces, but I encourage everyone, not just for my work, but for the other hundred artists they represent, it's a spectacular uh, trip place to go for travel. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much, Tim. We're going to talk about a couple of other um, of our artists that um, that work specifically in glass, because um, I think that some of the AACG members, um, as well as people um, new to this forum, would be curious. Um, Amber Cowan is an artist out of Philadelphia. She repurposes glass and makes highly textural pieces um, in single colors, in um, ombre gradations. Her process involves flame working, blowing, and hot sculpting, recycled, upcycled, and second life glass. It's usually American press glass from the 40s through the 80s that she's working with. Um, the glass is gener generally found um, through thrift stores, flea markets, but also post-production factory runs, the places where um, it, Glass was abandoned um, to the dustbins of um, American design. Amber comments, my current pieces are made by reworking discarded, upcycled, or unwanted pressed glassware produced by some of the best known but now defunct glass factories in America. Simultaneously subversive and patriotic, the objects explore the texture of material seduction and recount the history of US glass manufacturing, tracing its rise, glory, demise, and its influence on society. While still containing the original spirit of the vintage glass, the well-defined characteristics of color and pattern often appear transformed into materials other than glass. Amber is a recipient of the Raykal Commission from the Corning Museum of Glass. She's a US Artist Fellow and we recently learned she'll be receiving the Delphi Award from the Smithsonian Institution next spring in Washington, DC. Another one of our artists that we love and who produces really emotive work that's captivating is Christina Bothwell. She works with cast glass and clay to create ethereal and narrative sculptures. Bothwell's provocative works examine mysteries of the body and the soul through delicate and at times whimsical depictions of humans and animals, themes of life and death, dreamlike imagery and childhood wonder, she explores humans and nature. Um, she may also sometimes include elements of taxidermy, taxidermy in pieces or explore the translucency and transparency of glass and features imagery cast within her forms. She gives a lot of attention to the surface of her pieces and sometimes she paints imagery. And recently she's enjoyed developing sections of mosaic on her work. Another uh, wonderful couple of uh, glass artists here in North Carolina that we work with are Thor and Jennifer Bueno. Um, they make freestanding stacked Karen sculptures and wall-mounted compositions uh, with forms reminiscent of like a smooth river rock. Their collaboration allows the artist to create dynamic one-of-a-kind statement pieces. Thor sculpts and forms the glass uh, in, the, in this glass blowing studio while Jennifer creates the color palettes and compositions for each installation. The Bueno's work is available in a myriad of patterns, colors, and finishes, resulting in highly customizable works. Some of their most visually effective compositions feature different sized elements and a combination of finishes, including reflective metallics and sandblasted matte finished elements. 
<clears throat> the Buena's work really kind of grows off the architecture. It can be designed to suit any space and budget. Uh, their work is a great option for curved walls or wrapping around a corner, uh, really just to bring personality to unusual spaces. They are always coming up with new variations in forms and patterns. Recently, they've developed a series based on soap bubbles, of uh, round metallic elements with just a halo of color around the perimeter. And other variations include a series of pinched triangular forms in silver metallic that look like uh, mylar balloons. Uh, the options with their work can suit any personality and design aesthetic. Uh, we've done understated, elegant pieces with all silver mirrored groups, um, but there's also the playfulness of the bubble inspired pieces in rainbow colors or a river rock brooch and a subdued earth tones. Uh, there's just something for every aesthetic with the Bueno's work. Another artist we're really proud to work with is Joanna Manusis. She creates elegant sculptural objects and installations in glass and mixed media. Her work's in the collection of the Toledo Museum of Art, the Huntsville Museum of Art, and Glass Museet Ebeltoft in Denmark. Um, Momentum also recently placed her magnificent opalescent piece, Celine, with the Ringling Museum in Florida. Joe is currently in Sunderland, England, pursuing a PhD in glass. Really admire her for her creativity and the thoughtful research she puts into developing her work. She doesn't just recreate the same piece, rather she develops ideas and learns the techniques needed to implement them. From series to series, this imbues her work with a lot of individuality. Jo is very gifted at core casting. Many of her works utilize this technique with imagery inside other forms. She explores ideas of reflection and using mirroring to create contemporary works that reference historic objects. In addition to showing works from established artists and household names, Momentum is also proud to present works by emerging artists that uh, deserve to be on your radar. Here's a few of them, Allie Hogue, Terry Grant, and Sarah Vaughn. So Allie Hogue's artistic practice is often concerned with themes of magic and perception. Seeing magic as the desire to connect with the world outside of our perceptual and cognitive abilities, she attempts to create moments where one can believe that distance is overcome. Momentum Gallery is, is proud to feature uh, Allie's remarkable cast glass butterflies. Each butterfly is carefully made using four different molds to capture the texture of the wings on both the front and the back. The wings are thin enough to enjoy this detail through their surface. And Ho creates custom compositions with beautiful gradations of saturated color. Terry Grant is a relatively new artist to the gallery. Uh, she combines photographic imagery with a mosaic technique where the artist renders pictures in thousands of segmented rods of clear and colored glass. In her Falling into the Sky series, Grant shows tree branches reflected in water and has painstakingly created a textured pattern of ripples with clear rods of glass. Arrow of Time is a unique three-panel wall piece featuring a great image of the artist's daughter firing an arrow. With her eyes closed, the piece captures the moment of blind faith as the arrow is released from the bow. Sarah Vaughn is currently in the midst of a three-year residency at Penland School here in North Carolina. The figurative works in her Reconstructed Memories series thoughtfully depicts scenes from the artist's past in uh, personal vignettes. Creating accessible artworks that viewers, no matter their background, can get something from is one of Vaughn's main goals. She comments, what I'm trying to do is take emotion and give it visual context. We invite all of you to come see us in Asheville. Um, in the meantime, we hope you take a moment to enjoy a virtual tour feature that we have on our website. We've recently updated it. Uh, it allows you to fly through the gallery and kind of explore pieces up close and from different angles. Uh, every piece in the gallery is tagged on the virtual tour. Uh, and it links directly to our website where you can see additional images, uh, as long with full caption information with dimensions and pricing for every work in the gallery. Um, of course, we're also always happy to jump on a FaceTime call uh, or provide additional photos of work, answer any questions you may have. We want you to feel confident about purchasing work you're interested in, and we're committed to making the experience an enjoyable one. I want to thank the AACG and everyone for this opportunity to, to be with you today. And, and thank you again to our artists that joined us. It was fun hearing everybody else's telling about their work too. So thank you all. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. I want to thank all of our presenters today for making this uh, an exceptional event. Uh, this is the last episode, as we said, of the virtual SOFA 2022 from AACG. I hope all of you enjoyed it. For those of you who aren't members of AACG, I encourage you to join. And if you need to, the link is in the chat. I'll remind you also that our next meetup will be the first Friday in January. And as you've also may have seen in the chat, as a reminder that the Fired Up program next Tuesday will be highlighting a super artist, Karen Lamont, and many people will want to join us for that. Sure. So uh, if there are no major questions apparently in the chat, uh, we're going to call this session to a close. And on behalf of AECG, the meetup committee, and uh, everyone else affiliated here, happy holidays and stay healthy and uh, happy new year. See you next year.